He's he's my business partner now for our tailgates that we're doing. And one thing I want he wants to ask you is if you can sign his nipple so we can get a tie today. You tell about in the sign like right over here. You said the nipple. I'm not getting it. I don't want that. But yeah, let's get you set up. Let's get in there. Let's do it. That's good, that's good. All right, cameras are good. Yes, sir. Cameras are on, audio's rolling. You got your setup, you got the four box setup. You're good. Yep, you're good. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Loft. Today is the 100th episode. Uh, yeah, let's give a round of applause. We have the 100th episode today. <laughs> So I'm very excited. Uh, we had to make this special. We're at Xfinity Live. We're in the Skybox. Shout out to Jerry Roy and everybody at Xfinity Live for making this happen. Um, but I want to introduce our guest today. And you know, for the 100th episode, uh, it's been a long journey. But we had to do it big. We had to get the best of the best. So our next guest is a nine-time Pro Bowler who was inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2018. He is regarded as one of the greatest safeties of all time, a Philadelphia sports legend who goes by the name of Weapon X. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Dawkins is in the building today for the 100th episode. Appreciate it. Dude, thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. And so, you know, before we get started, we have a very special guest co-host as well, Jordan Spector. Give a round of applause to Jordan Spector. He is, he's the one who arguably, you know, made this whole thing happen. Um, you know, so shout out to him as well. And, and you guys have something really cool coming now. You want to dive deep into it, Jordan? Yeah, for sure. So I've been uh, working on this for a couple years now. I, uh, over the years, started to really get into the trading card industry and understand the excitement behind it and why people are so passionate about it. And I was like, man, I, I got to get into this game. I got I to gotta do my own trading card. So I was like, who, who comes to mind as, as the first person I'd love to work with to do my first ever trading card? And Brian came to mind for sure. And I, I knew that that could be a really special way to kick it off. <clears throat> so here we are a couple years later, we're, we're working yeah. through it and we, uh, we're, we're almost there. I'm what, very excited about what's it. The pro what's the project called? So uh, the title of the card is going to be called Relentless. That, mm -hmm. is, that is the title of the artwork. And um, the actual uh, series is called Immortals, Timeless mm -hmm. Legacies, which really um, embodies the, uh, the legacy that Brian left in the game of football and other guys left in the game, uh, a legacy that will never cease to, to be forgotten. Mm. Um, so it, it'll, be, it'll be a great way to start yeah. this, uh, this whole idea that yeah. I had. And Brian, I'm really curious, what made you want to like, dive into that and, and have like a trading card and, and really like, you know, put something out like that. Well, I've over the years um, have grown fond to create trading cards, right? Mm. You know, if you know people, if you don't know me, you don't know that I've all, I, I see the success in my life through my 16 year old eyes. Mm. Always. I always look through my 16 year old eyes. Mm. That individual did not think a lot of himself. He was very angry a lot of the times. Mm. And so he is looking at these cards in my mind and mm. being blown away by these are my images right his images on these cars yeah and then teaming up with jordan seeing you know how he um how his gift goes on the canvas mm -hmm. and it, it it jumps back off at you energy wise to be able to then put that on a trading card yeah. limited edition type of thing and then not only that to then be able to talk about the reason why it's relentless is because of the effort that was Mm. that was needed in that instance for me to do what I did in the game, right? And so that same relentless nature of attacking stuff is how I attack life now. Right. So it's a message in the card as well. Is that how you attacked your career as well? Uh, you have like, no idea. Like even getting Probably. drafted at a Clemson, like like getting, <clears throat> like, because like I said, I can only imagine, obviously now you've had your whole career behind you, you're a pro bowler, all pro, hall of famer, but like, I love to find people's why when I talk to them. And I think, you know, your why, you obviously have a huge cultural impact in Philly and, and, and the NFL and, and football. But, like, when you were first getting, you know, drafted or you were first in college, like, what kind, did you have, like, a huge chip on your shoulder? I had a block on my shoulder, bro. Mm. It wasn't a chip. Like mm. I said, I was, a, I was very angry a lot mm. of the times. I felt like I was overlooked. I felt like so many other people were getting some of the things that I think I could have, mm. I should have, I should have gotten. Um, and when I got into the National Football League, I was very green. Matter of fact, me and my, me and my, uh, me and Mark, we were talking about this last night. I was very green. I didn't know what I didn't know um, mm. as far as what the NFL was and all of those things. All I know is I was trying to make somebody's dog on team. Mm. I didn't know I was going to be a, you know, uh, a third round draft pick. Right. I know that it says the last pick in the second round, but in my mind, <laughs> I was the first pick of the third round. Yeah. Right? 
So in my, that was a, that was motivation for me. That I use that as motivation. Right. And so the, so the point right. is, yeah. is that you, at that moment in my life, and that uh, coming out of college, I did not know, I, I did not have Hall of Fame as something to look forward to or mm. to, to or to pursue. I was just trying to make somebody's dog on team. Right. And so when you got into the league, what was what was your goal? Just to, to, I guess to survive, right? Stay on the team. Yeah. So I did not know that. If you're drafted in the second round, third round, mm -hmm. um, you're likely not going to get cut that year or the mm -hmm. year after that. I did not know that. So in my mind, I can get cut at any time. Mm -hmm. So I was constantly doing and going at life, practice, everything from that vantage point that if I don't put good stuff on tape, if I'm not, my character is not where it needs to be, they can cut me at any time. Right. That was my mindset. So mm -hmm. that's how I approached every day in my rookie all, all the way up until my third year, to be honest with you, just somebody right. really let me know how the game of football worked from right. that vantage point. Right. And so when so when did you start to see the change of like, wow, I'm actually like playing really well, like you're starting to really develop as a player. Like, when did you really start to see that that change? Uh, it so the the person that has become that in the image that we're going to show here in, in a little bit, mm -hmm. that person was brought out by. Emmett Thomas, mm. my defensive back coach. Mm. He saw that he saw that in me. I did not. Mm. Again, I was just trying to make the team. I was trying to do the best that I could. But he saw greatness in me. All I can all I was pursuing was good. Mm. And good was never enough for him. So he never let me settle for good. He kept pushing me, kept pushing me. And I never understood why he was always so hard on me mm. until after that first year. I've had some, a measure of success, and then into that second year, I began to see what he saw. Mm. And once I saw what he saw, I began to go after things on a higher level, write down visions for myself on a higher level to, to pursue mm. a version of myself that um, actually became this individual that we're going to show here in a little mm. bit. Yeah, and so like, do you think that in order to find greatness, I know for a lot of people it's tough to see that in themselves, but do you think that he really contributed to who you are today? It's not even it's not even yeah. a question. It's, it's it's I've heard it said like this that oftentimes you can't see outside of the picture frame that you're in. Mm. So you need somebody to be able to see some mm. things that you can't. And so basically I believed in his vision of me until I can come up with a vision of myself. Mm. But once he showed me what I saw what he saw once again, I it, it opened up the floodgates. So yeah. really Jim Johnson got that dude that had been woken, that had been right. awakened to, to possibilities greater outside of just making somebody's football team. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. I mean, you have, you have to have a great team around you. And Jordan, like I'm sure you can attest to that too. Absolutely. Yeah, and so you have a, you have a, so you got a few questions lined up. I don't know if you had something you want to ask them. Yeah, uh, in general, the card. Let's, let's dive into the card. Let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah, for sure. So, um, I mean, in general, what do you feel is most unique about the card and this specific moment and image well let's say this do we want to present it should we bring it out uh, yeah. you, you want to do it now you want to, yeah we can bring it out all right we'll bring it out let's bring it out there we go so yeah so let's, let's talk about this so actually jordan i'm actually really curious so i know i know we, we showed it to you Bri, initially and and you loved it and obviously like that but like so what went into your process of making this jordan like i'm really curious man my uh my uh, rhythm of how I create has evolved over the years. And for me, what's very important is doing my research and really getting to a point where I feel like I'm in that person's shoes. So I'm in Brian's shoes. Mm. And when I'm in Brian's shoes, what to me is the most uh, energy driven image I can come up with that embodies the whole career. Not just one moment, not just one game, but like what is, what is he all about as a player and what kind of energy did he bring to the game? So for me, th this is from a, a specific moment that a lot of fans will recognize. Mm -hmm. And there's actually no image of this specific angle. Um, but at the same time, it worked in a way that helps embody that legacy and that relentless effort in every game, every play, never stopping. So that, <laughs> that was kind of the, uh, how, how it came to be. Yeah. I, I it. mean, I got to ask, like, what do you think, man? I got to get your opinion on it. I love it. Yeah, I love it because when I look at a picture, an image like this, and especially it's, it's been recreated by a, a time and space, I know what I was thinking in that moment. Mm. Like I know exactly what I was thinking in that moment. Um, and and, and that, in that moment, a couple of things happened. So first of all, I made a check that I should not have made, right? <laughs> 
that allowed the Giants to get a first down, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I was so mad <laughs> that I allowed, allowed that to happen that I like I literally felt like I was a, a animal at that time to <laughs> destroy this dude because he got this first down. So literally, yeah. and if you don't you don't know anything about me, so like I love <clears throat> Animal Planet, right? Mm. I love Animal Planet. So when you see big cats pounce on things, what do they do, right? So they that's so to me. That's what that represents, that mm. relentless effort to go to devour a, a, a prey, yeah. right? So, something that is, um, again, I was mad at the fact that I made that mistake. <laughs> but in that instance, <laughs> Try to make like, up for man, it. I'm, I'm, finna, I'm finna make this person pay mm. for getting that first down. Yeah, and so on the field, you were an absolute demon. On the, like, you were like, you aggressive, throwing your, your head, helmet to helmet. You did not care at all. Where did that instinct and that killer instinct come from for you? Man, that's 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 from the neighborhood, brother. Mm. Born in Jacksonville, Florida, on mm. the north side of football, mm. north north side of town. That's that's mm. like you're. <laughs> um, at some point, you're gonna have to be fighting somebody, right? right? Yeah. And and really, it's um, it's sad to say it like that, but that's the truth. At some point, you're gonna be fighting somebody, and so mm. I learned how to fight from my mom, right? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Which is funny, and it, it's just an, a relentless attacking. Like she told me, that you don't start something, you finish it. Mm. Um, if they're bigger than you, you pick up something and you handle business. But she told me, this last thing is what she told me. She said that you don't just fight. What you do is you fight in such a way as they have to pull you off. Mm. So that's how yeah. I attack. So that's how I attack life. I that's how that. I attack everything. I love that. So, yeah. I think a, a, a mantra that I really picked up this year um, is to be seen, not heard. And mm-hmm. through the things that you do and through you know, the, the things that you try to accomplish and that you, 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 you know, the accolade you try to build up and the person you try to become. And so I actually have a question about like your journey as a whole, like after your NFL journey, what do you think are some things that like you've really learned about yourself? I learned a great deal about myself because I'm all at, I won't say always, I have not always been this way, mm. but at, at some point right around my fourth year, I really began to be more introspective, Mm. to truly understand who I truly am and what I'm really blessed to be able to do. See people, you see these things and I love it. I'm so blessed to have done it, but this is not me. Mm. Football is not me. Mm. I played football. Like I am not football. Does that Mm. make sense? That does, yeah. So it is, it's it's what I did is not who I am. Mm. Who I am is this individual that's talking in front of you right now. So Mm. I've taken that which was utilized to do this in that time frame. I've taken that and now I'm sitting in this chair Mm. being able to converse with you, right, about why I did it and how I did it and all those things. Does Mm. that make sense? That does, yeah. So learning, I learned so much about myself, the limitations of who I am, um, the the strengths that I have, um, the, the motivational um, even vocal pattern that I have, like when mm. I, I, I'm an, intro, I'm an introvert. <laughs> yeah. I don't talk a whole lot, but mm. when it's, I felt that it's time to talk, um, I talk from my heart and mm. you know, the way that I can carry on a conversation in those moments, yeah. I, it's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's an intention. Um, but it's also something that, um, when I speak to my teammates, when I spoke to my teammates, I was always speaking from a place of trying to help them bring out the best in themselves mm. by me speaking the way that I was speaking. Even if it's trying to get them to do something different to help them in an area, I'm gonna give something that I have fallen in before I tell you that you can be better in this area. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I've learned so much in playing the game of football, but not just playing the game of football, what I was blessed to earn here in Philadelphia. Mm the name yeah. that I was blessed to earn here in Philadelphia. The, the, um, think about it, like I still 16 year old me right now, me considering that I'm an icon in here in Philadelphia. So I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. You, you feel me? Yeah. So, so I don't take any of those things for granted. I think cause you earned it. Yeah. You went through I'm the not, hard work. Yeah. You know, I think it's real. something that like a lot that I've, I'm starting to learn in my podcast and career, DJ career, nonprofit career is that like the hard work and the journey is literally everything and the and the, 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 the 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 milestones and the things you accomplish in between are are just all part of it and those are the little rewards that you get but at the same time like you're only as good as the last thing you've done i remember I actually had a moment on, i was djing the uh, bet franklin yacht the other day and i had a moment where i was reflecting on this episode itself and i'm like wow like 
I started filming in my mom's loft. Mm -hmm. Like I literally filmed, like I'll show you a picture at the end of my first setup. It was like a ring light, one camera, and I had like a lamp in the corner. Like, and it's just crazy how like it starts from that and you take those milestones and the consistency and just the blood, sweat and tears and the learning and the questions you ask yourself and being able to sit in, some, in front of someone like you and you, you agreeing to come on here. And like that stuff is like a super humbling and like, and just to have, you know, like you said, when you were 16 years old, like you didn't think you were gonna be here, but you know, you, you had the hard work and you went through a lot of shit to get here. Yeah. And so what's something you would say to like your 16 year old self um, you know, if you could go back and talk to him before this whole Brian Dawkins journey even started. Wow. I would tell him everything that you're going to, you're about to go through is worth it. Mm. I wouldn't want to tell myself anything other because I, I wouldn't want to tell me not to go through some of the things that I've gone through mm. because everything that I went through, I, I see it now and I know it to be, I grew through. Mm. If, if you are very conscious and aware of, of life's ups and downs, you understand that those down moments are sent to you to help you recognize where you are in that space, mm. good or bad. Mm. And it's up to you to then change the trajectory of your thinking mm. in order for you to, to develop the mindset that you need to not do the things that you just did to get in the space that you were yeah. in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So I look at it from this perspective and I, I try to explain it like this. I still work out to this day. I love it. It's a part of who I am. It's, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. But I can't get stronger by pushing the same weight. Mm. In order for me to get stronger, what do I have to do? I got to put more weight on the bar. Get uncomfortable. I have to get uncomfortable. But in that space of me getting uncomfortable, I have to sometimes, I may try to push weight that's too heavy for me. Mm. So in that moment, what do I need? A spotter. Right. So my question to anybody who's watching this, to who, who are the spotters in your life? Like who are those people that you can turn to to help you with those weights for the weighty situations and storms right. to help you when you can't push those things off? Right. That makes sense. Right. Yeah. So that's that's the totality of not the totality. That's just a, a different way of, of visualizing. In a way, it kind of is though. You yes. know what I mean? Like so, um, starting like like I said, in any journey you have, and you know, people. I'm sure people ask you, oh, like how how is it cool to have this and this and this? But like. The thing that I've really picked up on the past year is that be curious, ask yourself questions, solve those questions, then you have solutions. And that's what gets applied to your life. And so, you know, once you have those solutions and you start applying, that's when you start really building yourself. And that's, yeah. that's what happens. And then you put your head down for, you know, years, and then you get to a point where you're at where you're at today. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't, can't think about it. And it's like I said, it's the journey and you have to like, I, I don't really have like end goals. I just, for me, I have the little goals that I chip out, chip away at and I stack the wins and I stack the wins. Um, and Jordan, like with your art career, so it's funny, we were at Temple cause he was getting interviewed for, from Temple, he's an alumni like myself. And uh, he showed me one of his first paintings he made. And I thought it was so funny cause it was like a plane and it was like a, it was like an army like scene going on. And it's just so funny to see like, to go from something like that to this. And so, like, I'm curious on, like, your journey as well, Jordan, like, starting off and, like, now you're seated next to Brian Dawkins and have an amazing relationship with, with him, like, legends like him and, and people around the league. Like, starting off, like, did you ever think you would be in this position? I, I manifested it, but I did not uh, imagine it would get there necessarily. I didn't even know that I was going to have a career in art, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because of different reasons. You got the, the cliche sayings of a starving artist or you can't make it in art. And, yeah. Uh, that, that kind of put a chip on my shoulder, aside from football. I had a chip playing football, too. I wasn't mm. the biggest guy. I was a walk-on at Temple, <clears throat> so I can relate to that. But carrying that uh, kind of attitude to art and being relentless with my art and, and never taking no for an answer or maybe more importantly, uh, always saying yes to opportunities and, and putting yourself out there. Mm. And um, doing that over time consistently adds up. Mm. And, and got me to the point that I'm at today. It's consistency, yeah. Consistency and, and doing the right things, having the right intentions especially, and um, connecting with as many people as you can. And that, that's what I loved about Temple is education and you make a lot of connections too. A lot of guys that I played ball with who are in the league now yeah. um, that initially helped me get my foot in the door and, and bought some of my work or had me do a commission drawing for them. So, mm. um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's always cool to reflect and look back, which yeah. I don't do often enough. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, I, I always say I'm, I'm still just getting started. <laughs> That's I'm, how you have to I'm think, right? Started. Yep. Yeah. So you, you talked about connection and then, Bri, like for your career, obviously you're someone on the field. You're, you're a completely different human being on the field. When you're off the field, you're very good with your fans. You're very like you're just a really nice and humble guy. And like, so how, how important is it to you to connect with the community and people outside of, of football? Yeah. So point blank, I am them. Mm. They're no different for me. Like the only difference that I have, obviously, is the Lord has blessed me to be able to run, jump, right? To, <laughs> yeah, yeah. To do a lot of different run, things. Run, jump, but, tackle, head, um, head, dive head first. Yeah. <laughs> but that. <laughs> but like, I'm, I'm no different <clears throat> than those individuals. And again, because I have the capacity and I choose to constantly con and consistently from a good place, I always see that 16-year-old me and how frustrated mm -hmm. he was mm -hmm. and how angry he was. And how you know relentless we keep using this word but he was relentless but sometimes he was relentless using anger as his main weapon mm. and sometimes that anger was then spewed on people that he loved and so that he had to say he was sorry a whole lot mm. does this make sense mm -hmm. so when you when you look at it from that perspective when i look out and i'm blessed to have autograph sessions first of all i'm like wow y'all coming to see me mm -hmm. right i still can't get used to that right because yeah, yeah. i don't want to because i don't want to get used to that right that's the other reason and then I look at them as me asking my hero or the person I potentially looked up to for an autograph. How would I want that individual to have treated me mm. in this exchange? Treat so that's why treated, that, yeah. Yeah, so that person is standing in front of me. Nobody else exists in that moment. It's me and that person, and I'm listening to their questions. I'm trying to do everything that I can because nothing else exists besides me and that person because right. that person has waited in line. Right. They've waited. To, they paid to come see me, probably. Right. So I, I, I deserve in my excuse me. They deserve in that moment my undivided attention. I believe mm -hmm. that. That's nice. That's humble, and that, and that's all about perspective. And yeah. and my grandma will be so happy that I that I say this because I say it every single episode. And if you watch, you know, my grandma told me when I was 16 years old, and that's when I feel like my life changed as well. She told me when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. And life is a simply perspective. And it sounds like you're very grateful, you're very blessed, and, and you, you have a lot of great things going on for you. And so I'm really curious as to, I have a few questions actually. So one, hello blessed people. Yeah. What makes you want to say that every day on Instagram? So blessed is, if you have, you don't know anything about me, blessed is the word that I say on a continuous basis. <laughs> Jordan's like, yeah. <laughs> on a continual <laughs> basis. I, whatever, you know, whatever <clears throat> manuscript that we put out, I'm going to try my best to slide a blessed in there somewhere. Yeah. Blessed comes from the notion and the understanding that I have been blessed by the Lord to do the things that I've been able to do. Mm. Everything, everything that I have been able to come into, the things that I've gone on to do, the thing, the person I'm becoming, all of that has been planted inside of me from the beginning of time by the Lord. So I'm blessed. Mm. Mm. So the ble hello blessed people, I want you to recognize that you too are blessed. So hello, blessed the Lord people. So I want you to see that. And mm. oftentimes when people ask me, hey, hey, well, they say hello, Brian. Like I'll say, hey, blessed by the best. A lot of times that person will stop and be like, yeah, you know, I am. I am. So so whatever situation or the circumstances they've had in their life or what's going on in their life, in that moment, they click out of that. Mm. You, you use the word perspective, great word. Their perspective shifts to, wow, I'm blessed too. Mm. So now they begin to think on the things that they mm. are blessed with, right? So they don't necessarily have to then muddle over those things that they're the problem of that mm. time. Does this make sense? Yeah. So that's, one of, that's, that's why a, a lot of times... I start off my uh, on Instagram and all those places. Hello, blessed people. Hello, blessed people. Because again, I want you to recognize that you are blessed people. Mm. And it's your way to give back. Absolutely. And you started a foundation as well. And Jordan has a question here about that, but I think that's also amazing. So Jordan, I want you to you have a question for him about his foundation that he started. What was the, the main driver after playing that led to you shifting the focus towards Impact Foundation? Like, was it one thing in particular or you already knew you wanted to do that? No, I, in my mind, I was never going to start a foundation. Mm. I, my whole time here in Philadelphia, I lend or I gave um, to worthy, in my opinion, what, I, what my heart led me to foundations. So I was blessing different, whether juvenile diabetes at the time, uh, burn, prevention, burn prevention foundation, like different places I was blessing with my time and my resources during my time of play. But it was when, when I was with executive with the Philadelphia Eagles after we won the Super Bowl, like my heart changed. Mm. 
like my heart, my, the passion that I was helping people, helping the players and helping, you know, doing things from a, a coaching, from a football perspective. When I say coaching, not just on the field, but also mental, uh, mental coaching and spiritual coaching. Um, that changed and my heart began to want to do that for those outside of the building. Yeah. Mm. And I'm one person, I can't reach everybody. So the best way to be able to do that is to then form a foundation mm. yeah. and then to have those uh, bring people, uh, other companies along with me mm. to help me bless those individuals that I'm trying to bless. And once again, those individuals, individuals that I'm trying to bless are people in my neighborhood that I saw Mm. That that uh, that are no longer here. Mm. So that's really how the foundation really jumped into its uh, um, into the giving space. Do you have an end game for that? Is there is there something that you'd accomplish throughout the th in that space that would be like, oh wow, like you know, I did it. Like you know what I mean? Is there is there like an end goal for that, or no? You just you just want to help a, as many people as possible. A, that that vision is so huge. Mm. Like I put it this way, I I don't know that I would love to be. I don't know if that will be something that I will fulfill the vision. Mm. Legacy. I don't, I, I don't, I, I believe we'll start it. We'll get a lot of momentum because it's about building communities. It's about building learning centers. It's about a whole bunch of other things that not just, not just in the mental health realm that we're, we're, we're doing mm. right now. It's a whole mm. bunch more mm. than, than just that. So right. it's I, again, I, 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 it's something that I probably won't see the finish of. Mm. Mm. Love that. And so you mentioned that you, you help the players and you, you, you're a mental coach. And uh, when someone is, you know, struggling, whether they just they, they fumble the ball, miss the play, or they need something from you in terms of, like, motivation, um, is there anything that you really go to or, or a philosophy that you really go to to help those players? Well, first of all, I'm, it's my faith. Mm. You know, I'm a believer, so in Christ Jesus. So that's that's the foundation of who I am. Mm. And so from that perspective is how I listen and how I then give whatever it is that comes to me in that moment to help that individual mm. in whatever space they find themselves in. It's different. I can't give you just one thing because there's different individuals that I've come to know. And if when I'm in that locker room or I'm as, as an executive, I can speak to one person a little bit different than I can speak to another person because of the relationship, right? Mm -hmm. And because of the things that they've gone through, some person may have gone through a more traumatic experience than another person. So I can't motivate this person the same way I can motivate that person. Mm. But it, ultimately, it's not motivation, though. I want to inspire. Mm. Inspiration says that I'm bringing something, I'm breathing life into something that's already inside of you. Motivation is me motivating something that you want to do. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm giving you the juice, the right. energy, right? Fire, my voice and all that stuff. But now what I want to do literally is I want to inspire. I want to wake up that thing that's lying dormant, that, that flame that's inside of you, have that thing begin to burn a little bit and just burn brightly so that mm. you can then, you don't need, you don't need motivation no more. Mm. Like, see, that's the space that at some point that we have to get into. If you want to, if you're going to go on and do anything great, you, you, you have to be self-motivated. You have to be self-propelled. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to dive into yourself, go deep down in you, and just know that because other people around you may not be in this, the space that, that, that can help you in those moments. So if I'm constantly mm -hmm. depending on your energy, and one day for whatever reason you had something going on in your house, right, in your life, that you don't give me that motivation and you don't give me those words that, ah, come on, ah, come yeah. on, you don't give me that. <laughs> Then, yeah. then I don't, I don't have success. No, I, I cannot do that. So again, right. at some point, it has to be that I'm getting up, I'm working out because dog on it, I want it. Mm. I'm willing to do something different. I'm willing to put this down because I want that so bad. Does that make sense? Yeah. And ultimately, greatness and comfort. Great, there, you can't have greatness and be comfortable mm -hmm. and stay comfortable. Mm -hmm. yeah. In order for you to do great things and continually be great. You have to constantly put yourself in uncomfortable situations. Mm. Does that six, did that 16 year old have that? No, oh, that dude was just angry. I'm telling you, mm. <laughs> he was just mad. He was mad. He was little. He was small. He wasn't the biggest of guys. He was overlooked a whole lot because of that. And, mm. um, and he was constantly fighting. So he felt like he had to outwork everybody, fight everybody. Mm. And he used anger for a long period of time until, until he me, I understood the power of love. Mm. And when I understood the power of love, mm. so the power of love is simple as this. I want to go into the deep stories. The power of love is as simple as this. 
I had a healthy dose of, of, of fear of letting my teammates down, and I did not want to do it. Mm. So I was willing to do whatever needed to be done to not allow my teammates to be let down. Mm. So that means that I'm going to eat right, I'm going to sleep, I'm going to take my nutrients, I'm going to get my supplements, I'm going to stretch, I'm going to lift, I'm going to do everything, I'm going to go extra, go extra and be extra in order for me to give everything that I have. So some of my teammates, sadly, some of my teammates gave us what they had left. Mm. What you have left and what you have is completely different. What you have left is mean that you, you're eating whatever, you're doing whatever, you're not sleeping, you're not exercising, you're doing just enough, right? And you, you'll be able to give me. No, I wanted to give them everything that I had. Mm. So that means that I was doing all of those other things. So on game day, I, I can give you everything that I got. Mm. And because I felt so good about that, mm. and because I was blessed to be able to do it, is why you saw me transform on the field. Right. Like I was so thankful to be out on this field. Yeah. And also, I knew what I can do. Matter of fact, I knew what I was about to do to this opposing team. They just didn't know it yet. <laughs> so I was, I was hyped in that way as well. Right. So, so ultimately, all that, that energy that I was once using one way, I yeah. used the same energy in a different way, mm. from a place of love, mm. abundant love, mm. abundant power, abundant resources for me to then open the floodgates on game day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So starting off with love and, and I feel like it's, it's kind of weird. So, um, it's like the it's selfish, but unselfish, if that makes sense. Like it, it, you're helping on the people, but you're only doing it cause it truly does help you and you love it, you know? Um, and when you were on the field, you became weapon X. And so where did weapon X come from? Man. So what weapon X came from, um, I talked about growing up that I was angry and I was not angry. Up. I was not angry at 17. I was angry all the way up. Mm. to 16, 17, 18. So I, that anger that anger came from that place, that emotions of my neighborhood where I was growing up, um, being feeling overlooked, all of those things. And so I was, I was the person that if we lost a game, and, I was, I, and I'm also emotional, like I'm, a, I'm an emotional dude. I'll cry at the drop of the hat sometimes. <laughs> um, so all of that growing up, and then not knowing how to deal with it, and just trying to suck it up, mm -hmm. trying to suck some of the pain up, some of this trauma that I've seen around my neighbor, just suck it up, not really talking about those things. You know, those are things that um, I've had to deal with in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. My mid 20s is when I really, I finally dealt with some of those quote unquote demons um, that I had to deal with. Mm -hmm. So I, the emotional space that I did not know how to control, now I know how to control that part of me. Right. So it, it, is, it is no longer the, um, a part of me that, that, that is detrimental mm. to my relationships, to my life. It's something that's absolutely empowering for me mm. because I know how to regulate my emotions. I understand that my emotions, Control, yeah. my emotions none, no emotion that you have or got, that God has given us is, an, is, is bad. Mm. Think about that. Mm. So whatever emotion that you have, it is not a bad emotion. Sadness is not bad. Anger is not bad, right? Mm. So when you understand it, when I say, when someone then now says, uh, says to me about crying and being sad, it no longer triggers a, rep uh, a repulse from me. Mm. Like I gotta fight that off, right? right? Because it's a natural thing for us to tear up at times. It's right. a natural thing. And that does not make me weak yeah. because I recognize that. Does this make sense? Yeah. So all of this is what I'm, what I'm explaining to you now. All of this came past like 25. Mm. So <laughs> this, you learn that after yeah, 25. This is, yeah, this is 25 as I begin to dive deep into the word yeah. and start deep into studies. And, yeah. and do you I, believe that, stuff. do you believe that, like having those emotions? Because obviously, you know, like I've actually come to that realization as well. It's like people need to go through shit to learn from it. Like I've seen friends and family who go through stuff and you want to just be able to carry that burden for them, but they have to go through it because I learned, I know for myself, like, I went through it. Like, so I know that the person I came out from that and do you believe that that leads to growth? Because I guess my question is, why do you think those emotions are good? They're, they're good because God gave them to us. Mm. So when he, in the beginning, when he, when he created everything, he said, this was very good. So when he said, there was, this is very good, the, this being the earth and us, men, mankind, that everything that he put in Adam was good. Mm. 
that included emotions. Yeah. So they weren't bad. It's just that when we then use them, when I, when I use when I use my anger to damage you or do something against you, that's bad. Mm. Right. It's how I use the thing that so tearing up or crying. If if I'm, right. if everything makes me cry, like if, if I'm upset about everything, mm. that's not healthy, right? So that's mm. I'm using that good thing in a wrong way. So you do that with every mm. one of your emotions, and again, you understand. Now I understand so much more about that now, mm. about how to utilize what I have in a good way. But mm. I don't, I don't, I don't, and I don't just push and stuff feelings away though. I mm. recognize them. I see them coming. I recognize them what they are, but if they're not healthy for me in that moment, I, I, I breathe, take a couple of deep breaths, and I allow that emotion to just continue to drift on by be replacing it with something else, with mm. a different thought, mm. until I can sit in a moment of time, quiet, now I'm, now I'm coaching you now. <laughs> I'll until, take all the coaching I can get, me and Jordan can take, we'll take it. Until I can sit in a moment of time of just me <clears throat> in a private space, and then I can um, think back over that. There's a term called metacognition, Mm. It's the idea of thinking about your thinking process. So I think about my thinking process. Why mm. do I think that way? Where did I get that from? Because mm. everything that you do right now, is, it's been given to you by somebody else. Mm. We weren't programmed to come. When we were born, we were programmed along the way from different people in our lives. So you've been taught to do something by somebody else, right? Mm. Until you recognize it, and it becomes yours. So once I recognize specific things that I had learned from my mom, from my dad, that weren't serving me anymore, I let those things go. Mm. I kept the things that they taught me that blessed me, and I let those other things go. Mm. So now that's now me. I, I reprogram me to mm. think this way. Does mm. this make sense? Yeah, and it's also like something I've learned as well as like it's more important like a lot of times people think that when it comes to either getting healthy or getting themselves right, they need to get rid of things. I think when you start to think like, oh, I need to add things, you know, when you bring things in, that's what's going to ultimately, you know, make your life more fruitful and you're going to grow and learn from it. Um, and so... Hey, I'll get me deep in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the law, babe, you know what I mean? So, uh, Jordan, is, there, is that like a... When you're like in your art and you're and you're in your process thinking about oh how am I gonna make a Brian Dawkins trading card that he's going to love and enjoy is there like a, that that thought process of like like just the the why or like do you think about his why or when you're when you're doing someone's art do you think about their why and the things that they do in their life like how do you get your inspiration from stuff like that Yeah, like I said, that that evolution of creating has come a long way because I want to put myself in their shoes, not only watching highlights of him play to get amped up, but also interviews and things that he talks about, things of of why he does what he he did or what he does now. Um, So when I can be in those shoes, in, you know, thinking about how that person goes about their their business, I can can create a much better creation. And I do that Mm. with every project now. Mm. Uh, so it takes longer because I want to do that research, but it but it it, it pans out and it, it has always uh, allowed me to create a better uh, mm. piece of artwork. Love that. And diving, you learn more about the person. You watch their interviews. You check them out, and so you also learn about people's why. And Bri, I want to ask you, like, do you think that you found your why? Oh yeah. Mm. Oh yeah. My why, my ultimate why, yeah, is the purpose that the Lord has given me, mm. and that's to bless as many as people as po- possible. Mm with the different resources, whether that be spiritually, mentally, or physically, to help them go on to do things in their lives that's gonna and then inspire other individuals. Mm. So I, I know that I've been placed here and given the gifts that I've been given for a specific reason, it's not just for me, mm. it's for other individuals, it's mm. to inspire them. Mm. When, I, when I have people come up to me and they tell me that a, a picture of me inspires them to do something different, right? Again, I'm thankful for that, mm. but I try my best to let them recognize that the thing that you saw me do, the way that I went about doing it, you won't be able to do football, right? But you can take that and allow that to operate or, or to wake something inside of you up so you can go be, this is relentless, you can be relentless in life. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So my, my, my why, my ultimate why is to do that. Right. is to be that individual to bless and i'll give you more like a mission statement is to bless uh, passionate overcomers with the resources that they, that they need mm. those individuals that have felt um rejected those individuals that have felt that they are the mistakes that they have made 
by creating a space of care. That CARE is an acronym that stands for creativity, uh, accountability, resi uh, resilience, and then max effort mm -hmm. is the last E. Allowing them to then uh, live life with purpose on purpose, living life to create, to, to get rid of uh, negative thoughts, create new ideas, thoughts, to live life on uh, purpose on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's the totality of that is that more individuals would have an opportunity to, to live a life that uh, fulfills their life purpose. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love yeah, I know that. That's kind of long winded way to break it down. No, no, but, but, it's, yeah. that's actually really important. Is living living your purpose on purpose, yeah. living your life with intention um, and, and good intentions. And like I said, it sounds like you picked up so much, and you have so much knowledge of the game and of life. How important has your mother um, and your family been throughout your career and becoming the evolution that is Weapon X, Brian Dawkins? How important is has it been that your family, your mom, uh, being a part of your life? So this process happened when I began to truly look back over how, why I think the way that I think. Like I did that. Like I said, why do I think this way? Why, why do I go out and I push myself the way that I push myself when I look around me and I won't like nobody else is doing it the way that I'm doing Why is that? Why do I have this fight inside of me? Where mm. did that come from? I really did this. And as I look back and the Lord blessed me to look back and I saw that there's specific individuals, it's crazy. Um, me and Mark were just talking about this yesterday. There's certain pillars in my life that I can hold fast to that I learned life lessons to train my mind that this is the way you oper operate. And for anybody who does not understand what your mind is, your mind is not your brain. Your mind tells your brain what to do and your brain tells your body how to respond and how to act in life. That's how it works, your mind. So my father taught me some things. My father taught me um, what you start, you finish. You give max effort no matter where you find yourself. So even if you don't like the space that you're in, you give max effort and you stay coachable the whole time. Mm. And you, you find the nugget. Mm. Wherever you are at, you find that nugget. My dad right. has a very deep voice. <clears throat> he says, mm. so listen, listen, Scooter, he called my name is <laughs> Scooter. So he's Scooter, Scooter, listen, 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 what you do now. Whatever you do, you keep moving. Whatever happened yesterday, you keep moving. If it was bad, you get up, you keep moving. If it was good, you get up, you keep moving. Mm. That's what you do. You keep it. I'm literally. Yeah. Just, you keep moving. I was so. I got. Yeah, I got to hear your dad in person to, man, to, to, to be able to. Real deep voice. <laughs> you got a real deep voice. But and, and so from that from that vein, the person that I am now does all of that. Mm. When I give you my word, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish it. I'm gonna give you max effort. So that's you're gonna have to tell me to slow down, not speed up. Mm. I'm a pull back person, mm. right? Whatever you, whatever you put me in, even if I don't like it, I'm gonna give max effort, thereby recognizing more of me or what I have because I gave max effort. Mm. Sometimes you give, you, don't, you give half effort in a space because you don't wanna be there, but that space was designed to bring something out of you for you to then go to the next level of what God has for you. But if you, have, you don't do it in that space, you don't gain the thing that you need to go to the next level. Thereby, you don't go to the next level. You stay here in frustration. Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So when, when I then go to my mom, my mom is the other pillar. I just talked about all the things. I want to go back and go back into that. Mm -hmm. But my mom has survived breast cancer. She survived, uh, she survived three strokes, mm -hmm. right? She's, so my mom is an absolute fighter. A warrior, warrior yeah. yeah. So she's an absolute fighter. So my, my high school basketball coach, gave me the mindset that I have, that if he can't break me, nobody can. Mm. We ran so much in basketball, like bas we ran more than a track team. I'm talking about <laughs> sometimes 70 laps. Suicides. Oh my God, no, no suicide, <laughs> I'm talking about laps. It's 50 <laughs> laps, 100 laps. And because of what my dad told me, I was always the pacemaker, mm. the, the pace keeper. Mm. So I was always the lead set guy, the tone. I set the tone. So I literally had to put um, like bandages on my on my nipples because I was chasing chafing like a, a, a distance runner. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. but the point is, is because 
we, I then went on to see the significance of training that way and how other teams would shut down in the fourth quarter because we were in such good shape. Mm -hmm. And I saw them mentally tap out. I could look in their eyes and see them tapping out. Yeah. So what he, Hump taught me, this is Coach Hump, at the time I hated him. Mm -hmm. hey, listen, I hated him. We were talking about this year. I absolutely hated him. Mm -hmm. But I recognize now that this dude gave me this mindset yeah. that you can't break me. You mentally, you can't break me. Yeah. You may break my body. I might have to get some IVs because my body's going to shut down. But I'm not. I'm not going to stop working. I'm not going to stop pushing. Mm. Whatever you give me, I can do, and I'm going to push through it. Does mm. that make sense? Yeah. Your uh, your preparation bred confidence, and your confidence led to greatness. And that your greatness now, obviously, when you're you are going through greatness and you're trying to live that. It feels lonely. And so how did you, like I said, you were the one setting the tone, setting the pace. No one told you to do that. That was in you. What, like, how did that, like, how did you navigate that? Because, like I said, you're on the path that isn't taking a lot. And uh, it's a lonely road. And how did you navigate that lonely road that ultimately is your greatness? Ultimately, um, I will tell you that I accepted Christ into my life in 91. It was my 11th grade year. Mm. That's when I became a believer. Did something uh, like set that off? No, I mean it was it was just I knew I knew about him. My my, fa my father's a Catholic. My mom's a Baptist. So you know we, mm. we I had I knew about the faith, but I never accepted Christ into my life. But after a practice one time, a uh, minister who was actually also a coach asked the question: If you die today, you know where would you be? Right, heaven or hell? And you know I, I initially accepted Christ into my life out of fear. Right. But it's during that process when I accept the crisis to my life, then some, I, I, some things begin to change in me. Mm. Of me wanting to do things just different. Me wanting to go to Bible study just every week at school. Me ch changing things. Me, me putting a, 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 um, a, a thought in my head of how I can stop using the words that I was using because I was cursing a whole lot at that time. Mm. So that was the seed at that time of planting words like dog on it. Right? Mm. That's why I say dog on it so much. <laughs> yes, then you put that on there. On the, it's right there. Dog yeah, on it. Yep, right? Dog it's, on it's in the it. Background, yep, right. In the back of the car too. Yeah. yeah. So so <clears throat> that is the journey that that helped all of that is my faith journey ultimately. And it's 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 that faith journey that has allowed me not to allow this and the things that I've been blessed to then have or to go on to do to be uh, to help to, to make my head big, right? Mm. Death of your ego. Yes. Mm. Yes. Kept that all under control. So humility to me and the way that I've come to understand it in my walk with Christ is power under control. Like I have power, mm. but it's under control. That's deep. Yeah. So that means that if it's under control, that means I can then bless other individuals in different ways, that's why the word blessed again, right? Mm -hmm. With with different words that may come to me, 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 different resources now from the foundation. Like I can utilize this, all these things that I've gained because of the things that I've been blessed to be able to do. Now I can share that in yeah. a way to bless other individuals yeah, in their lives. Be life. seen, not heard. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's deep, Absolutely. man. I'm telling you, you get me real deep, man. Y'all got me <laughs> on here preaching a little bit. Hey, man, I, I, this is the stuff that I love. And, you know, like I said, I, I've, like, throughout my journey, I started off, first it was me and my buddy Nick talking about life, because as we always talked about, I actually start, this podcast started because I made a song for my sister and I wanted to interview her because there's a lot of things she struggles with. And I feel like as a human being, you're not free until you love yourself. And I think she struggles with that. And um, I was going to interview her. And so, like, down the line, like, I've had her on. And then I would have, like, uh, someone who suffered from a suicide attempt and now is in a wheelchair. I've had people on who have these stories that can be shared for everyone to see. You know what I mean? And, like, I feel like breeding hope and breeding uh, someone seeing someone like yourself talk about this stuff. Like, you're a human being. You know what I mean? Like, you, you've been through stuff. You know, and and having that, you know, and loving yourself and finding that was that a journey that was ever tough for you? Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Because I'm a man. First of all, you're not supposed to talk about your feelings, man. Right. <laughs> Matter of fact, every time that I see the word feelings, I think about the Grinch um, in um, towards the end when um, uh, Jim Carrey, when he gets his heart back. Right. Mm. And he starts talking about feelings, feelings, right? Yeah. So that's how I feel. Like you, you, man, we start hearing people talk about feelings, like, oh, feelings, feelings, yeah. right? 
But again, I go back to that understanding of things that I just described earlier. I won't go back into it in, in detail like I did. Yeah. Is that they are good. Every last one of them. I, I mentioned about your spotters in life, those people that can help you in those instances that you may be going through some things. We all should have individuals. My things that I've grown through in my life is now open for discussion because I've chosen to tell everybody about it. Mm. But that was the decision that I made. In the beginning, only one person, a couple, only two people knew about the things that I was going through. My therapist at the time, yeah. um, and my wife in, in some instances, and uh, uh, another two, good, uh, one individual that I can talk to from a deep place. So that was literally three people, two, two to three people that knew what was going on in my life. So my point is, is that just because you're going through something or you're growing through something, it's not for everybody. If you don't want, you don't have to tell it. It's not a must that you tell. I see people on Instagram. I see people on Facebook and they're telling all of their business. Listen, if that's just what you're led to do because you've overcome it and you want to then give individuals from that space, uh, this is how I've overcome these things. Cool. Or if you feel led to do it, but if you're doing it as a piece, a part of your therapy, like therapeutical mm -hmm. for yourself, I wouldn't advise that. I would keep it to me yeah. until I've come on the other side of it and right. it's no, no longer something that's um, a deterrent from me growing anymore. Does this right. make sense? Yeah. And now that it's out there in the world, um, you feel like now, I mean, obviously now you feel like you're able to like talk about your story and talk about like, who you are. Um, is there a sense of like relief that you have that now that you're, that it's out there, the things that you've been through? No. Mm. Because if if I had decided, which I wouldn't have, would not have, because what I went through was not just for me; it was for millions of people. I know that now. Um, it was I had to wait for the time that was right for me to do that. It wasn't a forced time. It was um, me sitting down, writing my Hall of Fame speech, and the, really the Holy Spirit spoke to me, spoke to me that. This is the time to release that, mm. to tell everybody what, what you have, what you have grown through mm. and how is light on the other side of the darkness that some people are in right now. Mm. That's why I chose to do it. That's why the Holy Spirit speech was the way that it went. Yeah. It's because that was an opportunity for me in front of millions of individuals. I mean, I've gotten DMs from people in Greece, Turkey, like I had to push translate to see what they're saying. Right? <laughs> wow. Of, of individuals um, vibing or, 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 or understanding where I was. Mm. Me speaking into the space that they, they may find themselves in. And I've had so many men um, DM me about them going to see, you know, take, talk to somebody about the things that they mm. were planning, planning to do to themselves and they didn't follow through to it. Does that make sense? Mm. So again, I knew, I know now even more so than ever that the things that I have grown through in my life was not just for me. So many other individuals are now empowered to live life relentlessly, right? Yeah. Because of my, uh, my, my being obedient to the time that it was right for me to, to announce the things that I had grown through. Yeah, all, yeah. Be, all because of an angry 16-year-old. Because of that dog on angry 16-year-old. Yeah. And when you were writing that speech, um, where, did, where did you start? because I can imagine that you have this piece of paper in front of you with this note in front of you. Like, where did you start with like, wow, like, you know, you're in the Hall of Fame and where did this speech start for you? And I, I'm really curious about that, about that speech. Um, you know, where did you start writing that? I started writing it from uh, texting my uncle. Mm. He's a professor at the University of Miami. Uh, Marv, Dr. Um, uh, Marvin the Dawkins, he's been there for like over 50 years now. And so he's a professor there. Um, and I text him, it's like, I don't, could you give me an outline that I can write my speech in? And he gave me an outline. And so basically I just plugged what he, his outline that he laid yeah. out and I plugged the thoughts from my heart. And I don't, I didn't write a speech. I put words and phrases on a piece of you paper. You plugged your life in. And then I spoke from my heart. That's what I, that's how I got up on the space. So I didn't, those things that you heard, it was not written out in detail. Mm. I saw that name, 
and I went into my heart. I saw that phrase, a couple of words, I went into my heart, right? Mm. So that's, that's, that's how I wrote my speech. Mm. How important is it for you to ask for help? It's extremely important because if we, we can't do it by ourselves. There's nobody, there's nobody walking the face of the earth that was given everything. We were given some things, but we weren't given everything, right? So there's people that have what you are lacking. That's why you get into business. If you can do everything by yourself, you wouldn't have a camera per, you wouldn't you wouldn't have these individuals. Yeah, I wouldn't have a soul team. You feel me? Yeah. You wouldn't have them. So right. we we need other individuals to even help our dreams come to fruition, right? You need help. So the term self-made millionaire is always a problem for me. Mm. So you mean you did everything by yourself? So nobody ever gave you anything, a shot or yeah. a chance. So you did it all by yourself, right? That always bothers me, mm. right? So when you look at it through this perspective and you recognize that, I, first of all, you don't have everything and you're not meant to do everything. Mm. That should be a load lifted off of a lot of people back. You aren't meant to do everything. So if there's certain things that you can't do well, right? And if it's not like a gifting, you weren't meant to do that, right. then stop. Right. Stop those things yeah. and lean into the things that you can do well. Right. The things that you do do well, lean into that. Yeah. But you have to ask for help again because it's spaces just like Emmett, going back to Emmett. Had I not known what I didn't know and I didn't listen to Emmett, I probably I wouldn't have become this. You weren't coachable. If I wasn't coachable, I wouldn't become this. So basically asking for help is coachable. Mm. That's the way I see it. Yeah, it's that's huge. And and I think uh as I went through my life, I used to play basketball and five uh, ten, and you know, not the tallest dude. You know, I'm not the tallest dude, most athletic dude in the world. And I realized that like everyone has that time in their life where they realize that they're they're right where they're supposed to be. And when I was I was in LA in 2018, I used to live there and uh, I had an internship there. And I think I was like 19 at the time. This is in 2018. I came back to finish my senior year at Temple. And when I graduated, I said, I'm going to move out there. I'm going to be somebody. I've always wanted to be somebody. That's been my biggest thing. I always wanted to be somebody. And, you know, I came back to school and I thought, oh, man, I need to be out there. I was not present in the moment at all. I hated school. I, I didn't take anything in. And um, COVID really changed that for me because when I was supposed to move out, it was, I, it was 2020 and COVID hit. And, uh, you know, I so I stayed at home. We we're all locked in the house. And. I, uh, that summer down the shore, I was down the shore. I had no purpose in life. I lost all my DJ gigs. I had nothing. I didn't even start the podcast yet. I had nothing going on. And um, I was like, man, I should be in LA right now. I mean, I said I'm down the shore every weekend drinking and doing stuff that, that doesn't matter. And I came home and like I said, I, I, I trickle this all back down to my sister. I have a twin sister, Haley. And uh, you know, if you're watching this, shout out to you. But uh, she asked me to make her a song and I, out of nowhere, because I showed her, I made a song and she, she asked me to make her a song. And that's what spiraled it because I was able to like really look at her focus, right? Focus and who she is and what she's struggling with and like, and feel for her. So I was able to put that together and that idea spiraled everything else and led me to this moment. And I finally feel like I'm comfortable in myself to realize that I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. You know, I think a lot of times we always feel like we're supposed to be somewhere else and we're not present. And uh, so Brian, how important for you um, during your career was it to, to be present? Because you have all these things being thrown at you. Oh, Brian Dawkins, you're the man, you're this, you're that. But like at the end of the day, like you said, you're an angry 16 year old. Like how important was it for you to, to be present? Yeah. It was very important for me to finally recognize that that was something to be, that I could be. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it took a while. Like it really took into my late thirties to truly grasp that understanding of things. Um, and you know, what, what happens to all of us for the most part, I believe anyway, is that the reason why we can't be 100% present is because we're being pulled. You're being pulled in the past in a negative way, and you're being pulled to the future in a negative way by things that aren't going to work out. I'm going to be stuck in this place and all. I can't make enough money. So you're not 100% in the pleasant, present moment in order for you to recognize all the things that you have in that moment. And see, that's the thing about it. It's in the moment that you can do everything that you need to do to have your tomorrow be something worth pushing towards, right? Mm. But you can also take those things from the past, reframe them to fit into a place of wisdom to be used in your mo in your today mm. so that you're empowered, empowering your future to be a, a greater place. So being in the present moment 
is how you recognize things. So if, if you're not in the present moment, if, if we're sitting in this room and you're constantly thinking about so many other things, you won't be like, if, if I'm sitting in this room and I had so many other things on my mind, I wouldn't have recognized that Reggie White's jersey was right there. Mm -hmm. Reggie White is one of the individuals that helped me with my faith, my faith walk. I saw Reggie dominate mm -hmm. and then I saw him praise God. Mm. I saw him hit somebody, they stay down and him pray over him. I was like, I got it. I, got, I know what I can do, right? So I learned a lot from Reggie. So my point is that because I'm present in the moment, I'm not anticipating other, any, anything other than to have a, 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 a deep conversation in this moment. But at the same time, I'm aware of all my surroundings, everybody looking in this moment. Does that make sense? Mm. When you don't recognize the power of the present moment and being present in that moment. And sometimes taking a deep breath is a grounding thing. I tell my daughters this all the time. You feel that rush of emotion come and just take a deep breath. Hold it for a second and blow it out of, blow it out of your mouth through puckered lips mm. for as long as you can. And what is it? It grounds you. It brings you. And when I say ground, it takes you and brings you right back into this space instead of thinking about the past or the future. So when we understand that and we begin to do that as a practice, which I have, wow, the things that you come up with is so powerful. Mm, yeah. The things that you are able to then um, a witness and, and become is so powerful. And I keep saying become, and I hope, I hope everybody understands when I say become, becoming who, I'm, who I've become was already in me when I was 16 and an angry dude. This dude here was in me when I was 16. I just didn't know it yet. So I became him because he was already in me in seed form. Yeah. But I was not exercising the right things. I wasn't in present moments and I wasn't exercising the right type of faith and at work ethic and belief yeah. to have that dude be who he needed to be at that time. Does this yeah. make sense? Yeah, I'm getting really mad. Yeah, I like, see it. <laughs> yeah, I see it. It's crazy. Like, I didn't expect to be here. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't supposed to be here. I don't think. Um, yeah, 2020 was a bad year. Yeah, I lost all my friends. I lost a lot of people. Uh, bad relationship. Um, I had nothing, and, and I got a full room of people who love me. And, and I'm talking to Brian Dawkins. You know what I mean? It's just like crazy how like when you take the first step. You know, sometimes the first step is the most important step. And, uh, you know, and being in, you know, having the first thing is DMing Jordan saying, you know, I love your art, come on the podcast. And the relationship that me and him have built has been absolutely insane. And like, like a brotherhood, like I remember we were in Florida together, just sitting, talking at the bar, just talking about life and like, it's just little things like that. And like, you know, it all came at me at once is like, you know, I moved out of my parents' house and, um, you know, I just really told myself that I was just going to go for it. You know, I was super uncomfortable. I didn't have any money. I said, I'm going to get all the money I can to put the deposit down on first month's rent and, and see what happens. And, you know, you put yourself in a position where you have to survive and, and a position where you're like, you know what, for the first time in my life, I'm actually going to believe in myself and double down on myself and, you know, look where we're at today. And it's like, it's just crazy to me. And, and for you, like, how important was it for you to, like, uh, actually, I rephrase it this way. Like, at what moment in your life, Brian, did you decide to double down on Brian Dawkins? I doubled down on me after my rookie year when I went through that depression, mm. when I went through that the suicidal um, ideologies. I doubled down on me. And when I say double down on me, I doubled down on uh, my faith, my walk with Christ. I doubled down on that because in doubling down on my walk with Christ has brought out the best in me. Hmm. When I doubled down on my relationship, when I doubled down on beginning to read, to begin at the journal, which I do every day now, read, I read, I journal, meditate. Meditate for me is listening. That's just what it is, is listening. When I read, when I pray, I talk, and when I meditate, I listen. So I've been doing that from that time up until this time. And I don't see myself quitting that anytime soon. So I doubled down on that, that I'm that that there was something great inside of me that I just I I can feel it. I just didn't know what it was. I just didn't know how to get to it. I just didn't know. Um there's so many other people doing so many other things, getting quote unquote greatness and having success. 
And I wanted some of that stuff from a selfish, from a selfish place. Mm. But the greatness that the Lord has allowed me to go on to have has included so many people mm. in my life, so many fans. My fa it's, it's been such a blessing to, to, to climb and do the things that I've been able to do because along the way, we, I've been blessed to bless so many people. So when you say doubling down on me, I doubled down on him. And when I doubled down on him in that relationship, I'm telling you, I recognized who I really was. Mm. I recognized more and more of who I really was. Yeah. So that I can then operate in a completely different space. Yeah. Completely different space. I think comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. And uh, uh, like I said, this year has been a huge year for me just mentally and who I become. And like the one thing that I've learned this year is I am never, ever, ever attached to the outcome ever. And like you said, so I started doing the, the 12 steps. Um, I'm not recovery or anything like that, but my friend Megan is, and she said that she, er, she encourages everyone to do it because the 12 steps isn't about recovery. It's about finding your, who you are. And one of the things that was that, you know, was, uh, was told is that you leave it up to a higher power. You leave everything in your life to a higher power because she always says to always tell the truth because when you have to lie, you have to remember what you said. Mm -hmm. And when you, lies. and when you lie, you're trying to make an outcome in your favor, but when you always tell the truth and your truth, leave it up to that higher power and that outcome is what it is. Mm -hmm. it, it, you've done everything you can. You know what I mean? Um, and so with this trading card and, and everything you've been building, um, first off, I want to ask, how, how are you? How am I? How are you? What's, what's the, how what you, are you? What do you think I'm about to say? I uh, <laughs> actually I don't know what's gonna come out of your mouth. I'm blessed, man. Blessed, <laughs> love that, man. Well, listen. I'm blessed, man. So you have this card coming out. Do we have any information that we can give people? Well, uh, now that you've seen the card, you've seen behind it the uh, kind of the reveal of what the box is gonna look like, which, in my opinion, is almost just as cool as the card itself. You know, everything that goes into it, all the components. I'm very particular about. I know Brian's very particular about. So I'm excited about it all. And uh, I don't want to give a specific date yet, but it okay. is coming soon. Just give him a little bit. The, uh, the, the drop date. <laughs> um, so we're going to have a limited edition card available, uh, multiple variations of the same card, some way more limited than others, some that are signed by Brian, some signed by myself, si some signed by both. Um, so there's going to be a lot of cool different um, uh, variants to it in that, in that sense. Uh, but it's coming soon. Jordan, awesome. I'm so proud of you, man. You, This is amazing. This looks great. Everything you've been doing. And, and Brian, seriously, like... Thank you so much for coming on. I actually have a gift for you if you can hand me that. Um, so I know that we have the art here, but I was like, you know what? Love Wolverine, that's great, but come on. I wanna do something, I wanted to give you something that was from me and something that I created for you. So okay. this so this is a, a t-shirt oh, with, with a cross yeah. on it with yeah. Brian Dogs, and it says, hello, bless people on the bottom. I and it. I wanted to give that to you. It's an extra large, I don't know what size you were. I oh, got, that's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah, that's so good. I wanted to get you something that, you know, was from me that I created that way, you know. No, that's awesome. Because like I said, like. That is all, let y'all see what he's yeah. talking yeah, he, about. He showed it to me for the artist's yeah, opinion, and I said, man, you, you hit it out of the park. Don't, awesome. don't change anything. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to make something from me. And, and like I said, honestly, like I don't take this for granted. Like this is, I'm not supposed to be here, right? Like uh, it's like, I am so just honored and grateful that like, even like all my friends are able to hear, be here, support me and like to, to, to be able to like bless myself in the presence of someone like you who has so much knowledge of, of the game and of life. Like I'm just truly grateful as a human being that like I'm able to sit here and interview and, and have not even interview, have a conversation with yeah, you. Yeah. And so, like I said, I, I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart that, you know, we were able to build this relationship and, and, and hopefully see what happens. And, you know, thanks so much for coming on. No. So let, let me let me say this, though. You you were supposed to be here. Mm. You just didn't know it. Mm. You're supposed to be here. You didn't think it, but you were supposed to be here. You're supposed to be right where you are right now and everything that you have grown through the painful past, the things that brings tears, tears continue, continually back to your eyes, you're supposed to grow through all of that so that you can be, become the man that you have become. And the man that you have become will have more empathy for the other individuals that are going through sim similar stuff. So now, um, thank you for having me here, but yes, you were supposed to be right where you are, brother. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. So the one thing that everyone like i said we'll wrap up in a minute but i just wanted to get this out there like i feel like everyone has that point in time where like you're pursuing something like yourself with a football career and you have someone reach out to you and say that oh like this meant a lot to me or your speech meant a lot to me like I, the one moment i had for me like i said this is my 100th episode and like i started in the beginning 
I had a mom who, and I said, I shout out Rose Young, shout out to you. Uh, I had a mom who reached out to me who lost her son a few mm-hmm. years back to an overdose around Christmas time. And uh, she reached out to me and, and she told my mom and said that I listen to your son's podcast every night before I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. The second I heard that changed everything. This is why I set this up here. This is why I get up early to come and, and set this up here. When, and you know what I mean? Like we could have easily did it at my house or something, but I want to do something special for the people who are watching and, and to everyone who listens to The Loft. And like I said, like thank you to everyone who listens to The Loft and, and, and supports me. And, and it's just, like I said, I don't take any of it for granted. You know what I mean? Because the people you see on the way up are the same exact people you see on the way down. Mm-hmm. And I firmly mm-hmm. believe that you treat everyone with the same respect that you want. Man tell your truth and that life just happens you know amen but uh this was the 100th episode special that brian thank you for coming on man this is jordan thank you for guest co-hosting dude um like i said go check out the card i'll have everything linked in the description we'll be you'll be seeing some some promo you'll be seeing all of that make sure you grab some brian dawkins you're an absolute legend thank you so much for coming on i appreciate it appreciate you brother Thank you. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of The Loft. I'm Kevin Nichols. That's Brian Dawkins. That's Jordan Spector. Peace, guys. Peace. That was awesome. Thanks, Brian. Absolutely. That was good, man. Thanks. Woo. Yes, sure. Thank you. Thank you.